Hi and welcome to this quick review of buffer ratio calculations. Um, sometimes people say that these are a little bit more challenging, but they're not really, provided you have a think about how the actual approach needs to happen. If you can do a regular buffer pH calculation based on the K expression, you should have no problem at all with this particular method. So why do we need to know about this? Well, let's say you wanted to make a buffer that allowed you to maintain a certain pH. All we're doing really is using the same buffer calculation, but instead of trying to work out the pH from the concentrations of our ingredients, we know what the pH is, and we're trying to work out the concentrations to mix together. And although I try very hard to avoid plugging my own channel, um, I do have another clip called Buffers in the Blood, it's about six minutes long or so, um, which covers the hydrogen carbonate buffer system in the blood for those of you who are interested. But I'm not going to talk about the hydrogen carbonate buffer system in this particular clip. I'm just going to go through the, the general mathematical um, sort of step-by-step -step, uh, procedure to do it. So let's put a typical example on the screen. Um, instead of having to work out the pH, this time you're working out the concentration ratio. So to do this, we've got to go back to the, the buffer calculation using the Ka expression. So if uh, we go through the three steps from the Ka expression through to the rearrangement to get H plus as the, um, as the subject, and finally the pH expression, which tells you what to do with that um, concentration of H plus ions, the highlighted part is the ratio you want in your question. But the pH is what the question has given you. So how do you get to that ratio from the pH? It's quite simple. So by doing that you get 1.698 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter to the minus 3. So the next thing to do is to use the Ka value that's provided in the question to make the, the ratio the subject. So this gives us the concentration of weak acid over the concentration of conjugate base equals the concentration of H plus over Ka. So the two numbers um, that I've highlighted represent a one-to-one -one ratio because of the same order of magnitude times 10 to the minus 5. So that means that uh, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, the middle of this buffer's pH range, its working pH range, would be 4.77. So we could manipulate the buffer to work at different places in that pH range um, by changing the ratio of our weak acid and the conjugate base. So in other words, if you add more weak acid, the buffer works at a lower pH, and if you add more weak, um, sorry, so more conjugate base instead, it works at higher pH. In fact, you can control it very precisely. Um, if you were to do a 10 to 1 ratio of um, ethanoic acid to ethanoate, obviously in favour of the ethanoic acid, you'd lower the working pH to 3.77. If you did it the other way round, with 10 to 1 in favour of ethanoate, instead of ethanoic acid, you give a pH of 5.77. Okay, so hopefully this has been a fairly useful introduction to buffer, ra buffer ratio calculations and how to manipulate them. Just before I go, I just wanted to point out one alternative way you could um, write out the rearrangement at the bottom of the screen. Although the rearrangement at the bottom of the screen is the sort of natural one you do, uh, moving on from where I've highlighted the ratio that you're looking for, so in other words, H plus over Ka, you could also do it the other way around and get the same answer. So it could be expressed that way as well. Um, both methods are acceptable, provided um, if you're doing the change to one side, you do the change to the other. So if I've reversed what's the denomination, what's the numerator on the left-hand side, I have to do the same on the right-hand side as well, otherwise you start getting a bit muddled up. But um, mathematically, 
it's, it's either one is okay. Um, so you choose. Uh, in the mark schemes, they tend to allow both. So in the meantime, thanks for listening. Uh, go away and practice some examples as always to, to get your head around this. And uh, until next time, see you soon.